So a few months ago, Dan Gilbart, who is this kind of brilliant scientist inventor guy who lives in Vancouver, he did a really interesting uh, video, which is a shop tour of his, his workshop. He's, I think he's semi-retired now, but he talks about all the machines in his shop and it's, it's a fascinating video. Uh, but one of the machines that he talks about is, and he makes a point of it, he talks about this bending brake that he built about 50 years ago um, when he basically had nothing. Um, but I, I've just become so obsessed with this bending brake. I think it is such a cool piece of uh, kit that I really want to try to duplicate it and make one for myself. So when we... When we look at this brake, there's just so many unique things about it. One is just how compact and low profile it is and how simple all the mechanisms are. But obviously it's very capable because he's able to bend fairly thick sheet metal with it. I mean, if you look at this brake compared to some of the standard American-made brakes that, um, like a Diacro 24-inch brake from that same era, um, they're they're much more complex. They're the co the castings are complex. The mechanisms are taller and more bulky. And they, I mean, as far as I can tell, this does just as good of a job as one of those brakes. There's some mysteries about it that I still haven't really figured out. But I'm trying my best to deduce what's going on inside there by looking at the video footage. So first of all, he says he made the entire thing out of two different bars of cold rolled steel. One was four inches wide by half an inch thick, and the other was an inch and a half wide, and it was also half an inch thick. If we assume that these pieces are four inches high, and this section is an inch and a half high, then I think you can ma start making some general assumptions about how big this thing is. And if you look along the length of this, it it looks like there's about 23 socket head screws there. Um, I don't think there's 23 fingers, I just think there's 23 fasteners. So if, if Dan is anything, he's practical and he's spacing those fasteners an inch apart. So probably some of them are six inches, five inches, and he even talks about how if you're smart, you'll do like a binary partitioning sort of of the brake fingers to get the most efficient, the smallest number of brake fingers um, and the most flexibility with the arrangement. So actually, if you're smart, you do it in some binary order, so you have a minimum number of pieces, you know, to get to any dimension you want. But what, you know, what, what, one of the other things you notice here is that um, he has just really nice details, like all the flexor fittings for the shafting. I'm assuming the shafts are three quarters or five eighths, uh, like round stock. And so he can adjust those flexor fittings to get the eccentrics in just the right position. And then he's got these very, very heavy, heavy vertical posts on the outboard ends of the this kind of rocking or clamp structure. And um, at first I, you know, he talks about the eccentrics and the ability to push the whole rack back and forth with by using those eccentrics and the and the the eccentrics are kind of synchronized by using the chain drive that holds them together which is a really cool idea but when i looked at the video very closely i i noticed something which was that the the clamping structure was rocking underneath those posts but the posts weren't moving um so that made me it it, it makes me think that the eccentrics are, there's something going on underneath there with those eccentrics, like there's a rocking surface or some kind of bearing surface that takes a, and a tremendous amount of pressure, but it still can rotate around the eccentrics. So I'm still trying to figure that one out. It's still a mystery, but those posts are basically what holds the uh, the entire clamping structure in place. All of that upward force, when you when you lift those cams, the, the lever arm is pushing up against the bottoms of those nuts. And that's why those, those posts are so heavy duty and why the nuts are so beefy. That's what's creating that downward force on the other end of the lever arm. And one of the things that's very telling to me is that when he wants to bend 
a piece of sheet metal that's a little bit thicker, he puts it right in line with one of those nuts because that's where the structure of the brake is the strongest. He's probably not going to get any bowing of a plate and he can really put some force down on it. I can't help but feel like if those eccentrics are rotating around, and whether he had eccentrics or not, I, I can't help but think that if that thing is rocking back and forth, even if it's just a couple degrees, that it's going to wallow out the... It, it's going to kind of grind a, an oval shape in the holes in the plate. So I feel like there's got to be some more elegant solution underneath there that we just can't see. And the clue that I think, there, there is a little bit of a clue. I don't know what the clue represents, but there's this kind of, there's some kind of curved kind of bar supporting that rocker. Um, it doesn't seem to move against it or slide underneath the, that rocker when it transitions forward and back around the eccentrics, but I'm, I'm, it's some kind of hidden, hidden structure that I don't know what the purpose of it is. Also, if you look at the nuts, there's there's some kind of set screw, some kind of slot in there. And if you look at hey, went from one section of the video to the other, those nuts actually, I think they rotate slightly. Um, so he's, if it's too hard to actually do the clamping pressure, he can probably adjust those nuts and that'll lift the entire plate up and down to accommodate thinner or thicker material. So I was thinking more and more about what is it that's going on under there uh, with those eccentrics. I started looking at these kind of weird swiveling bearings on MacMaster car that are kind of like a spherical section in a bearing um, ring. And I thought, well, what if it's like a hemisphere? Uh, like here's your brake and the brake kind of apron is going up and down. And then you have that rocker structure and what if it's kind of carried in that eccentric as it goes around, the, as the eccentric spins, it slides back and forth. Um, but as the, as the panel rocks, it, because it has that hemispherical cup design, it's a much less, it, it's like it holds the whole thing more tightly together and allows for that rocking motion. So that's basically where I'm at with it. I, I thought maybe I'd try prototyping it in wood first just to get everything kind of worked out with cheap material. And then if I could find the money for a bigger piece of steel, I would start um, kind of committing to building this thing. So that's part one. Thanks.